OpenAI started with a bold mission to make AI in ways that is most likely to benefit humanity without the need to generate financial return. But today, their models are locked behind APIs, billion dollar deals and secrecy. Meanwhile, Meta is doing the exact opposite, releasing powerful AI models as open source for the world to use. So what changed? Why did OpenAI abandon its open source roots? And with competition heating up, will they be forced to change course again? This is why OpenAI is no longer open source. To understand why OpenAI is no longer open source, we first have to understand why they chose to be open source to begin with. Back in 2012, Elon Musk started to become very worried that humans would develop super intelligent AI that would not only surpass human intelligence, but also threaten humanity's existence itself. Musk started discussing these ideas with friends, one of them being Google co-founder Larry Page. Page did not share the same view and thought that AI replacing humans would simply be the next stage of evolution. Elon was shocked about this and decided that he needed to develop an answer to this, an open source company that would make sure that if super intelligent AI was developed, it would benefit the world rather than being controlled by a single profit seeking company. With that, he and the other co-founders founded OpenAI. When they announced OpenAI in 2015, they wrote a pretty interesting press release. They mentioned the goal of the company, which, as I mentioned in the intro, was to advance digital intelligence in a way that is most likely to benefit humanity as a whole, unconstrained by need to generate financial return. They also wrote, since our research is free from financial obligations, we can better focus on a positive human impact. The reason why this is interesting for us today is because we know they would not continue with this view forever. But for the first few years, they did live up to their own stated goals. For example, when GPT-2 came out, they did, after a few months, release the weights and the code to train the model. In 2018, Elon Musk, who was back then OpenAI's biggest donor, got impatient. He wanted more control, even pushing to become CEO. When the board rejected him, he left and with him went OpenAI's biggest funding source. Suddenly, OpenAI had a problem. Keeping top researchers required big salaries and training AI models was burning through cash. Without a new funding model, they wouldn't survive. OpenAI was struggling to attract funding because, after all, they were a non-profit company spending money like they were a startup. They needed to come up with a new way to attract investors. What they came up with was a for-profit arm of the company which was overseen by the non-profit. With this new structure, they attracted investors, among others a $1 billion investment from Microsoft. From a funding perspective, this decision made sense, but it did start to question the non-profit nature of the company. Was it non-profit or was it for-profit? While OpenAI did release GPT-2 as open source after the Microsoft deal was made, when they released GPT-3, they announced that for the first time they had no intentions of releasing the model openly. Instead, Microsoft would get exclusive access to the model weights. And for the first time, they announced a paying product in form of a API access to the model. In the release they wrote, ultimately what we care about most is ensuring artificial general intelligence benefits everyone. We see developing commercial products as one of the ways to make sure we have enough funding to succeed. To some extent, this made sense, because you would be naive to think that OpenAI could just keep running in the way they did without generating any revenue. It was simply unsustainable. By making the model closed source, they forced companies to use their API to access their models. If they had made the models open source, they would not necessarily have captured the value generated by the models. Furthermore, they also talked a lot about how safety was one of the reasons why they did not want to release the weights. GPT-3 was obviously a huge success, especially after the launch of ChatGPT. And with this success, other companies wanted to enter the game. And one question they needed to ask themselves were, would they release an open source model or stick to the closed source like OpenAI? As a response to ChatGPT's success, Meta decided to develop Llama, a family of LLMs which would go on to compete with OpenAI. But they made the decision to open source them. 
or at least release the weights to the public. In an article from 2024, Mark Zuckerberg explains their decision. He outlines why an open source alternative is great for developers as it allows them to fine tune the models for their use case, run their own local versions and protect their data. This all made sense. But one of the biggest questions I had when doing research for this video was why a company like Meta would want to release an open source model. After all, we have just explained why it made some business sense for OpenAI to close the models. And while it would benefit consumers, why would it make sense from a business model perspective for Meta to spend billions of dollars developing these models and then just releasing them to the world for free? To answer this question, I found a fascinating article written by Gwen Brandman that I think you should read. The article explains why big companies seek to develop open source or free technology in order to strengthen their own position elsewhere. The article talks about the idea called commoditizing your complement. You can think of it this way. If you run a babysitting business, you'd want parents to go out to dinner more often. The more they eat out, the more they need babysitters. If you could somehow make restaurants meals cheaper or even free, you'd boost demand for your own service. The same principle works in tech. For example, back in 1998, Netscape made their browser completely free making it easier for people to get on the internet. They did this so they could sell servers, which would increase in demand as more people started spending more time on the internet. By commoditizing the complement, they were able to increase the demand for their product, in the same way that cheaper restaurant dinners would increase the demand for babysitters. So for Meta, they clearly want to commoditize LLMs, but why? What are they trying to sell more of? Unlike a company like Amazon or Microsoft, they are not selling server usage that would be more popular as LLMs get cheaper and better. Well, if LLMs become cheaper and better, Meta can use them to analyze their users' posts on social media more accurately and therefore serve them more targeted ads. And they do this without having to rely on other companies for the technology. Furthermore, LLMs might help users post more and better content which hopefully can increase the time they spend on social media. I was honestly blown away when I found this out. I think it is such an interesting idea that combines technology and business strategy, which is exactly what I like to focus on on this channel. But where does this leave OpenAI? Now that not only Meta, but also companies like DeepSeek are releasing open source model, it forces OpenAI to ask themselves if they are going open source again in the future. The reason why OpenAI became closed source to begin with was to monetize access to its models. That made sense because when they launched GPT-3, they were so far ahead of everyone else. But that is no longer the case. DeepSeek, Llama 3 are great open source alternatives. And if those become even better, companies will not want to pay OpenAI. Now that OpenAI is closed source, it hurts them in a few different ways. First, developers that want to fine-tune models are forced to use alternatives such as Llama or DeepSeek. Second, OpenAI loses goodwill, as they are to some extent seen as a money-hungry company that has abandoned their original mission. But let's consider OpenAI's options here. The first option is to continue as they are doing. This means keeping their models closed source and monetizing access to them through both APIs and customer-facing products such as ChatGPT. But here's the real problem, OpenAI is already bleeding cash. Despite their massive user base, ChatGPT and API access alone aren't enough to cover the insane costs of training and running these models. Their survival depends on staying ahead. If open source models like Llama or DeepSeek become just as good or even better, OpenAI's entire business model collapses. Because after all, why would you pay for GPT when you can get something just as powerful or even more powerful for free with full control? The other option is to open source some or all of their models. Doing this, they could still continue with the business model they already offer. They can still sell API access to their models and they could still offer ChatGPT. But they could then benefit from developers actively tweaking their models and try to find some good ways to improve their performance. Of course, some developers would either self-host or use alternative cloud providers that are not Microsoft. But honestly, those developers are probably going to do that regardless. But today, they are probably just using Llama or DeepSeek instead. 
but I keep thinking back on this compliment article. And the question for me is really, if LLMs become a commodity, then how is OpenAI going to stand out? The whole business model is built upon the idea that they sell access to these bottles. But if the price of running these LLMs continues to go down so rapidly as they have done in the past few years, OpenAI needs to offer a complement. Maybe the complement is simply the API access and ChatGPT, but I don't know if this will be enough. At least they're not making money on them right now. OpenAI is at a crossroads. They built their success on having the best models, but the open source wave is closing in very fast. And if they don't adapt, whether by going open source themselves or finding a new way to stay ahead, they risk losing their edge. The AI race is just getting started, and OpenAI's next move could define its future. What do you think? Should they open source their models again? Let me know in the comments. If you like this video, please consider to like and subscribe. I have around 400 subscribers right now, and I'm grateful for everyone.